printed. Could you make them, maybe get copies so that we can? March of dawn. Oh. I gave it back to you. Yes. <laughs> Braun. No, Braun. 30 seconds more. Oh. Nope. Five. Hey, would you please join us in a salute to the flag? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the true republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws, 1975, this is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the Municipal Building, by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2014 to the News Record and Star Ledger in December 2013, and by filing said notice in the office of the Township Clerk. Mr. Branley? Here. Mrs. Larrier? Mr. Leventhal? Here. Mr. Ryan? Here. Mayor DeLuca? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires all meetings of public bodies to be open to the public, and whereas Section 7 provides that the governing body has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation of the public at any meeting, and whereas desire this governing body to comply with the provision of this act, same time con conduct its business, in an orderly and expeditious manner, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee. Township Maplewood does hereby prohibit, except to set forth in a formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observations of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all of its regular and special meetings. I'll move. Second. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank Good you. evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 18th meeting of the Maplewood Township Committee. Tonight's meeting, uh, we're, we have a few budgets we're going to be looking at. First, we're going to be, um, well, before we get to that, we're going to have our first public comment period. So that'll be uh, number five on the agenda. And if you need an agenda, there are copies up here. After that, we'll have the resolution uh, numbers 5614, which is introduction of the 2014 municipal budget. And then we'll have a presentation to the governing body from the Maplewood Village Alliance on their budget for 2014. And then a pres presentation by the Springfield Avenue Partnership. Both of those are special improvement districts and by law, they need to present their budgets to the governing body. After that, we have, let's see, uh, two, three ordinances on final passage. One is to permit residential property owners to erect a six-foot fence along the rear property line of their property under certain circumstances. Two is the capital improvement uh, bond ordinance. Three is to provide compensation um, <coughs> Uh, figures for the part-time and seasonal employees of the Department of Recreation. Then we have a new ordinance, and that is to um, exceed the municipal cap appropriation limit and to establish a cap bank. And we'll have Mr. Manning explain that when we get to it, just for the public to understand what that is. We have three discussion items, uh, commercial vehicles and residential parking. We'll be discussing 60 Woodland Road, some of the plans we have to increase parking there. Um, and then we'll, um, Mr. Desiderio, we have here update on 60 Woodland litigation, but we dealt with that uh, under, in the close, so we don't have to deal with it out here, right? Okay, fine. Then we have a consent agenda, which we're appointing probationary, four probationary officers, police officers. We have some cancellations of balances of accounts, uh, we're approving a contract with Freeman's Fish Market to be the concessionaire at the uh, pool. Uh, some other pool chemicals, and then we'll be approving minutes of the March 4th meeting. So that's our agenda for this evening, and um, we're going to start with the public comment session. If there's anyone who would like to address the Township Committee, we ask you to please come up here and give us your name and share what you like with us. 
Good evening, Mayor DeLuca and members of the Township Committee. For the record, I'm Deborah Collins, Director of Small Business Development and the Affirmative Action Officer for the County of Essex. I'm also the County's Liaison to Maplewood. And here are this evening's announcements. Actually, before I speak to those, next Thursday, March 27th, from 10 to noon, the Office of Small Business Development will be hosting an estimating workshop for contractors who are small, woman-owned, minority, or LGBTQ uh, at the Richard J. Cody Arena. If anyone's interested in attending, it's free, but on a first-come, first-served basis, please give us a call at 973-621-2010. That's 973-621-2010. An estimating workshop. Uh, the Office of Small Business Development will also be launching a financial literacy series. I think I spoke briefly about it the last time I was here, but I will make certain to send. Uh, we now have a flyer announcing that these will be a five part series <coughs> encompassing everything from reading and analyzing financial statements to QuickBooks to <coughs> banking, uh, all the kinds of financial pieces of information that a business needs in order to grow or to sustain its, its uh, livelihood. On to the other announcements. Yeah, on April 5th, well, Cherry Blossom Festival begins with the Cherry Blossom Challenge Bike Race on Saturday, April 5th, Sunday, April 6th, the Cherry Blossom 10K Run, Saturday, April 12th, a one-mile fun run or walk, Saturday, April 12th as well is Essex County Family Day, and Sunday, April 13th is Bloomfest at our Cherry Blossom Welcome Center in Branch Brook Park. <coughs> I invite the public to attend, and I've left some of the announcements with the clerk's office. Seems a bit premature, but I'll talk about it just the same. Uh, starting in June, June 6th to be exact, we'll have free Friday flicks um, at the Essex County Kipps Castles. And uh, the first is Rio. So uh, it's, a, it's an animated film that I'm sure young people will enjoy and some older folks as well, such as myself. I love animation and sci-fi. Uh, Riker Hill Art Park, Saturday, June 7th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. This is a free event that's open to the public at an inside glimpse of the art world by attending the Essex County Riker Hill Art Park Open House. While visiting a variety of different art studios, you'll have the opportunity to talk to the artists, purchase artwork, and stop by the gallery to view a compilation exhibition. Artists and residents work in a variety of disciplines, including clay, jewelry, glass blowing, painting, sculpture, printmaking, and photography. The county executive and the Board of Chosen Freeholders invite you to discover this creative environment within our, within our Essex County Park system. And that number is 973. 239-7056, that's 973-239-7056. And I'm happy to take any questions you may have at this time. Questions from Ms. Collins? Mayor Boyd? Sorry, um, I've noticed that work has begun on the S-curve of South Orange Avenue in the South Mountain Reservation. Um, do you uh, know whether or not at any time that that stretch of South Mountain Avenue will be closed to cars? Good question, and I will email you tomorrow. I'll okay. see the uh, Director of Public Works at the Cabinet meeting, and I'll make sure to ask him. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. <coughs> Is there anyone else who would like to address the Township Committee? Anyone else want to address the Township Committee? We'll have another session uh, later on in the meeting. <coughs> Close this now and we'll move to um, the Resolution 56-14. And before that, let me um, just say a few words as the Chair of the Budget Committee. Um, the budget that we're introducing tonight for 2014 reflects the values and the goals of the Township Committee, and those are to balance improving municipal services um, and improving the quality of life with the sensitivity to the property tax burden that is felt by our residents. And when we started the budget discussions in January, we committed ourselves to keeping to a real 2% increase or even going lower 
and we've accomplished that as I will describe later. But let me talk a little bit about the budget in broad strokes. The budget we're introducing is um, 39,300,000, which is about 280,000 less than 2013. Yet in that budget, we're paying $175,000 more to retire municipal debt. This is more than we did last year. We're also hiring two new police officers. We're bringing the uniform personnel in our police department from up from 60 to 62. We're going to be doing some special details with those, uh, those that additional uh, personnel. We're investing in our cultural affairs office, uh, going to full time, anticipating the increased use of the former women's club. We've expanded the jitney service. We've added um, a fourth route to and from the train, making sure that as people move here, because a lot of people do uh, recognize the jitney as a as an incentive to move here and not have to have two cars that we're able to serve them. So increasing the jitney was one, one of our goals. By 4%, we're increasing the amount that we're giving to the Maplewood Memorial Library, some another jewel that we have here in the community that we want to continue to support. And through this budget, we continue to be a pace setter in the state with shared services. We share the courts and code enforcement with South Orange, we have a 9-11 dispatch sharing uh, service with Irvington and other municipalities. Our park maintenance is shared with South Orange and the Board of Ed. We have IT services that we're going to be doing with South Orange. We have automobile services that we're doing with a couple of uh, municipalities and um, code enforcement, uh, code uh, and zoning enforcement with Milburn. We share services there. So again, we're introducing a budget tonight of 39300000 Now the question always is, well, what's that going to cost us? So the revenue is broken up into um, what we talk about is uh, revenue that we are able to raise. Uh, fund balance is going to be 5% of the, of the revenue. Miscellaneous revenue, those are fees for various things, about 16%. Unfortunately, our state aid is only at 5% of a $39 million budget. Only 5% comes from the state. And receipts from delinquent taxes is 3%. So we'll put all that together, all that revenue together, and that's 28% that we're able to raise. So where does the other money come from? Well, unfortunately, it comes from property taxes. So 72% of the revenue that we raise in town comes from property taxes. And it's a, it's a large amount. It actually has gone up from last year when it was 69%. But as, we said, as I said earlier, our commitment here was to keep to a 2% increase, and we've done that. The municipal tax rate will go up from about $0.09 cents per 100 to $0.9.2 cents per 100. On a, a assessed uh, home value, the average home is assessed here at roughly $395,000. And so the municipal tax on that is a little over $3,600, which is a $75 increase from 2013. So when we talk about our 2% uh, for the average homeowner in town, that means it's going to be a $75 increase in taxes. But we're not going to stop there. We're introducing the budget tonight. We're going to continue to look at revenue, continue to look at our expenses. One thing I'd like to uh, remind our, um, my colleagues is that we did not calculate any revenue from the pilot from the Maplewood Crossing project. And to the degree that we can bring some of that revenue in and even reduce that 2% even more, I'd like us to consider that. So I think this is a good um, first shot at introducing the budget doing what we said we were going to do, meeting our values and our goals. And so with that, um, if we could get the clerk to uh, do the reading of the uh, resolution. Mr. Mayor, uh, resolution number 56-14 is introduction of the 2014 municipal budget. Uh, municipal budget of the Township of Maplewood County of Essex <coughs> for fiscal year 2014, be it resolved that the following statements of revenues and appropriations shall constitute the municipal budget for the year 2014. Be it further resolved that said budget be published in the news record in the issue of March 27, 2014. 
the governing body of the Township of Maplewood does hereby approve the following as a budget for the year 2014. Notice is hereby given that the budget and tax resolution was approved by the governing body of the Township of Maplewood County of Essex on March 18, 2014. A hearing on the budget and tax resolution will be held at the municipal building on May 20th, 2014 at 7.30 o'clock p.m., at which time and place discussions to said budget and tax resolution for the year 2014 may be presented by taxpayers or other interested persons. Ms. Leventhal, can we get a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move the adoption of this resolution. A second. Discussion? Nice job by the Finance Committee and uh, Administration getting us where we need to be. <coughs> Manny, you want to say anything or everything's been said? No, I, I think you uh, just, uh, we were talking about the sewer user charge. Last year you had a temporary increase and that is, has been removed right. from this year. Good point. Yeah, last year we added uh, $25. Was that what that was? Uh, it was 18 dollars $18, because we had legal fees and we removed that. So the surf, the sewer fee for 2014 will go back to $175, correct? Great. Thank you. I would like Larry. to commend Mr. Manning. Um, he went through this process with us without the benefit of a CFO. And thank you for that. It couldn't have been easy. So kudos to you. Well, thank you, and I do want to thank uh, Mr. Facone, Joseph Facone, who gave a lot of help, too, and Paulette, our deputy, Ercolano, who, who worked very hard on it, too. Great. Thank you. Hey, please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. And remember, we will have a budget hearing on May 20th. And that'll be an opportunity for any of the citizens that want to come and make comments. The budget will also be uh, printed in the newspaper, the news record. In the issue of March 27th. Okay, March 27th, it'll be in there. And anyone who wants to look at the full budget can come here to Town Hall. Yes, we'll have copies uh, being printed up of the uh, introduced budget. All right. And we'll put them around. We can put some at the library and things like that. And it will also be on our website. And it'll be on the website, too. Okay. Uh, next up is we have a, the proposed budget for the Maplewood Village Alliance for 2014, the Special Improvement District. And I see John James and Julie Duran. Julie Doran. Duran, I, I already called you the boxer. The, the Duran. Julie Doran, excuse me. Uh, you can sit down here. Why don't you sit here? Julie's got double duty, so. <laughs> The, the, the microphone you have, John, is the better one. Okay, thank you. I'm John James. I'm here with Julie Doran, our village manager. And we're just here to review our 2014 budget with you. Um, the 2014 budget is an increase over the 2013 budget. And there are a few areas where that occurs. Um, one is where we now are getting additional revenue from the station house and so that revenue from last year and this year will be carried into our new budget um, we have additional events and promotion income that came in from last year that will be carried forward into our new budget and we have some savings from last year's programs that are going to be carried forward into the new budget we were also asking for a five thousand dollar township contribution for additional landscaping and greenery in the village which is the last item that was um, in addition to our new budget. The um, carryover for cleaning services from last year is the same. And in terms of looking at our priorities and things for this year, we were able to reap some savings from our programs last year. So in the past two years, we've kind of come to the township and asked for um, funding for our banner proposal. And which wasn't funded because of tight funds. So we have gone back to our other programs and have taken that money out with the additions that we received. And we're gonna be launching that program this year, which we think is going to be a terrific addition to the village during the post office construction. 
Um, so we are going to be spending more money on our design and streetscape with the banner installation. And we are going to be spending more money on marketing during that construction process. We will continue our events and promotions such as Dickens, Halloween, and all of our mini merchant um, retail um, promotions such as Girls Night Out, et cetera, that have been very, very successful. Questions? Let me ask you a question, uh, your opinion. There's been some discussion in the past about um, looking at the assessment revenue and whether or not that should be increased on an annual basis or every so many years. What do you, what's your sense of the financial condition of the village to even consider something like that? Um, I think that if we look at that over the long term, that it would be better if the village assessment was tied to the overall township budget and increases so that as the budget increases there was an increase for the village alliance as opposed to coming back on a yearly basis or a four-year basis or a five-year basis so essentially with a fixed income we are a diminishing on a diminishing diminished budget basis depending on how many years we come back and we have to come back as a special hearing I think the way that it was originally set up was it was set up as a percentage of the assessment in the village and was intended to stay at a fixed percentage as that rises right. um, at some point that was changed to a fixed number and it would certainly be easier for us if it was back to the percentage basis as opposed to a fixed number. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Maybe we'll invite you into to the finance committee, and we can talk about it over this year, <clears throat> over okay. this year, and try to figure something out for 2015. Yeah, and in the in the the current environment and in the environment of the past few years, we have not felt that it was appropriate for us to come back for an increase. You know, just one thing to remember with when we tied it to the assessment, I think the reason why we, we didn't is um, when people win tax appeals, it gets taken off the assessments. Exactly. And so, you wanna, and so then what we were doing was keeping it flat and just spreading it over more people. Of course, when we, had, <clears throat> when we had the revaluation or reassessment, then all that went up and it changed some too. But I mean, we can talk a lot, you know, talk about it. Maybe we could even think of contacting other SIDS to see how they might do it um, so that it keeps current and it doesn't stay flat because it's, it's very difficult to have the same amount of money, Yes. you know, two, three, four years in a row. You just can't get things done. Right. Anyone else have anything? So we'll, we'll have you in for the Finance Committee and we'll kick it around over the okay. year. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have a motion to accept the budget. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Now we have a presentation to the governing body on the Springfield Avenue Partnership Special Improvement District. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Good evening. I'm Julie Doran, manager of the Springfield Avenue Partnership. Uh, Mr. Nearing had intended to join me tonight, but he must have uh, been delayed. Uh, we are requesting a total budget of $213,138 in 2014. It's an increase of approximately $4,000 over, in 2014, I mean. That's an increase of approximately $4,000 over the pre prior year, primarily due to an increased ask in the service level agreement for uh, landscaping fees, we want to try to uh, contribute to the maintenance of the newly planted areas on the bump outs at Prospect and Springfield, and also the planned uh, landscaping around the gazebo with additional funds. Other than that, the major changes uh, in 2014 are within the programming. Oh, the programming is remaining essentially the same as prior years. The major difference is that we've outsourced Mayfest uh, to a, uh, a professional street fair vendor this year. So uh, it's really a, a wash. A lot of that money went in and then went back out. Uh, we raised it and then spent it on the event. Uh, so that works differently this year with the outside vendor. Um, 
other changes are just uh, increase, small increases in expected contributions to certain events and decreases in contributions to other events. Uh, but our primary events will remain Mayfest, uh, Winterfest, which really is the holiday decorating along Springfield Avenue, which is one of our uh, primary expenses, largest expenses. Uh, we're doing Harvest Fest again this year, and we uh, just finished Black History Month, which was very successful for the district. The other big change is uh, to continue to grow our marketing efforts, primarily our electronic marketing. We have a new website that we launched in the second half of 2013. We'll be introducing the mobile app along with the Chamber and the Village Alliance, and we'll continue to push social media for Springfield Avenue and grow our email marketing base as a way to drive visitors. Uh, we're also focusing a lot on community outreach around the avenue. And I think those are the major highlights uh, for the budget. Are there any questions? Do you have a target date for when the mobile app will be available? Excellent, I mean, roughly. Excellent question. I'd say it's uh, probably the end of second quarter. Okay. Do you want to make an announcement about Maplewood Restaurant Week since you're oh. here? <laughs> Certainly. Uh, Maplewood Restaurant Week is once again a joint effort of the Village Alliance, the Partnership, and the Chamber of Commerce. It starts on Monday, the 24th, and runs through uh, the Sunday the 30th um, it is you can find there's over 25 restaurants participating and you can find all of their various specials on Maplewood New Jersey restaurant week.com so uh, dine out and give back this year we've added a charitable component we're benefiting rent party pantry Inc so local hunger initiatives will benefit um, due to the efforts of uh, restaurant week and people should know that we have food Five continents here in Maplewood. Yes, we're an international dining destination. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, uh, with no questions, can we get a motion to accept the Springfield Avenue Partnership Special Improvement District Budget for 2014? So moved. Second. Let's call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Fritzen, both of these will be heard when? Uh, the hearings will be for uh, both of them Six. on Tuesday, May 6th. Tuesday, May 6th, we'll have a public hearing on both of those special improvement budgets. Both budgets will be uh, published in the Maplewood South Orange News Record, and every property owner will be uh, served notice of the budget and the hearing date. Okay. Every affected property owner. Every affected property owner. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do you know which okay. do you know, sorry, do you know which um, edition of the news record that'll be in? Uh, the twenty uh, seventh. Same same as the budget. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Do we have an ordinance on final passage? Item 10, Mayor. <clears throat> ordinance on final passage, ordinance number twenty seven forty three dash fourteen. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 271 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Zoning and Development Regulations. This ordinance will permit residential property owners to erect a six-foot fence along the rear property line of their property under certain circumstances. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance? Seeing no one will close the public hearing on this, and uh, Mrs. Larrier, can we get a motion? Uh, yes, Mayor. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole, and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance <coughs> in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Ryan. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. The mover of the motion. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I would just like to mention again that this allows uh, six foot fences across the rear line of the property in certain circumstances. Um, I am cognizant that the police prefer four-foot fences. Uh, I think this is, I believe this is a, a, a balance between the needs of the 
our local law enforcement and the needs and desires of our residents. Mr. Ryan. I respectfully disagree with my colleague. Um, I, I think you're, you're well-intentioned, and I don't disagree with your intentions, but I, I, I'm, I remain opposed to this. Um, I think it's a bad idea, and uh, uh, I wish I could persuade a third person to vote along with me. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm the sec Leventhal. second person voting uh, against this, again, because of safety considerations. I'd also like to mention that uh, I did get a suggestion from a resident that um, perhaps this could be um, implemented in a different way, which would be that six-foot fences be allowed if the contiguous neighbor at the back uh, agreed with it. But uh, I think um, at this point, I don't know that there'd be a vote. there wouldn't be a vote to go back and recreate this. So, uh, but I remain no. Anyone else? Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee. Yes. Mrs. Larrier. Yes. Mrs. Leventhal. No. Mr. Ryan. No. Mayor DeLuca. Yes. Passes three to two. Can we have another ordinance on final passage? Item 11, ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 2744-14, bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements of the Township of Maplewood in the County of Essex, New Jersey, appropriating the aggregate amount of $3,624,022, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $2,908,737 in bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the cost thereof. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this budget, the capital ordinance for 2014? Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and sorry. Uh, Ms. Leventhal, can we get a motion? Mr. Mayor, move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Um, before we get into any discussion, I just want to um, highlight some of the major things we'll be doing this year. One is we will be doing um, about a million dollars in municipal road and curb improvements this year. We will be paving half of Springfield Avenue from the Union border to Wellesley Street. Um, we will be doing, we have some money in here for upgrades at the parking lot in 60 Woodland Road. At the pool, we'll be doing some locker room renovation. I'm sorry, we're not going to be doing that. That was last year, right? Sorry. Uh, we're going to be putting money aside for a fire engine. This is something we invest in every year. We're buying a new street sweeper. One of the things that's important is that people want their streets cleaned, and so we're buying a new street sweeper and a new Jitney bus. We have to maintain that fleet. As I said earlier, we've expanded now to four routes. This does require us to have sufficient uh, Jitneys in stock so that in case one breaks down. We'll be doing some improvements with the police uh, dispatch and also some video system upgrades in the cars. Um, we'll be making some improvements at the library, um, particularly with uh, the computers and servers. And we'll be doing some IT uh, work here and also making an annual contribution to our affordable housing program. Anybody have any comments? On the ordinance. Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. And we have an, a last ordinance on final passage. It's Mayor item number 12, ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 2745 14, to provide for the compensation of part time and seasonal employees of the Recreation Department for the year 2014. This ordinance will set the wages for part-time and seasonal employees in the Maplewood Recreation Department. Ms. Leventhal. 
Oh, I'm sorry, that's right, it's on second <laughs> reading. Pay attention here. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance which sets salaries for part-time and seasonal employees of the Recreation Department? Seeing no one will close the public hearing. And now, Ms. Leventhal. Mr. Mayor, move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange news record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. And we have introduction of a new ordinance. Mr. Mayor, item number 13, introduction of new ordinance, ordinance number 2746-14. Calendar year 2014 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank, <clears throat> bank per NJSA 40A 4 45.14. Mr. I have to, okay. Question. Uh, I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on April 1st, <clears throat> 2014. Second. Mr. Manning, could you give us a brief um, yeah. introduction as to what this ordinance is about? Yes, basically the law allows us to exceed the cap with exceptions and uh, allows us to bank the difference if we do not exceed the cap. And we every a, year... This is an expenditure cap? Yeah, uh, no. Uh, yes, this is the uh, appropriations limits. So what we do is uh, we ask that you do this because if something were to come up and we needed to use the bank, it lasts for two years, uh, and we would like to have it. We'd like to have the option. We, we've never used it. Oh, so, not, not in a while. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well I meant since here. we have not used it since we've had the 2% tax levy cap, but we have in the past used it. Ms. Leventhal. I, I guess it's somehow I'm, I'm confused by the words. Calendar year 2014 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits. And to establish well, a cap. Well, the and to. I, yes, and that's that where the part is. If you don't exceed or the amount that you do succeed is less than what you are allowed, and you, that's, back, you bank that and amount. And that's our situation, less yes. than allowed? It's, we are not exceeding it at all. Okay. So uh, I guess, are these the right words? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. They, just just it, by passing this ordinance, it allows us to do this. Yes. And if you don't, then, if, you know, this year would be a blank in our budget right. in terms okay. of if there was a... I get it. So... So it's an... If, if, in other words, if we yes. uh, bank something, it's an authorization, you know, an ability to spend that. Right. But um, not an authorization, not, but the ability to... The ability to, to if yeah. If you need it in a future my, budget. Right. Yes, not this year's budget, right, really, because we've already set that. I understand. Okay. If we have to go back and use that, do we have to no, you levy taxes to offset it? You mean if next year you were to use it? Yes. Or if, it was, well, it if depends. There was some revenue, but there has, to, there has to be revenue raised, whether it's right. taxes or something else. Or another but there's, source. There's two variables, right? There's there's a circumstance where you might find yourself in a situation of needing to spend more than the cap would allow you to. Yes. And, and, and the cap bank would allow you to do that. You'd still have to cover that expenditure Cost. with revenues somewhere. Yes. And, the, and, and the, the other caps apply there. But you would have the authorization to spend what you banked. Yes. yes. Up yes. to that right. amount. But none oh, of there's also a real bank. But we didn't really bank it. We no, it's didn't a, the, bank, no. the word bank is kind of misleading. It's, it's not an really authorization money. It's not really tax. money. It's All we're doing is authorizing an, an accounting dodge. If, right. You know, we're, we're not, not authorizing. We're not no, authorizing. I don't the, think it's an accounting well, dodge. Yeah. We're not authorizing anybody to actually exceed any spending limits. Right. We're not authorizing anybody to spend past any. If, if it comes to the point where we would have to do that, that would have to be done by this governing body yes. by yes. resolution. Yes. And that could be done only, it wouldn't be done this year, it would have right. to, it's for Next a year. future year. Right. Right. And you remember there's also a bank on the uh, tax size, tax right. side too. Yes, we have a tax so, levy. And you can go above 2% if there are certain reasons why you would have to go 2%. Right. 
But you have to, I think you have to pass an ordinance. You'd have to You have to do that. And, that and right. There's also, yeah. there's also some part of it where right. you have to even go to the citizens if you go over a certain amount. Right. Yes, you'd have to do a referendum. But no. right now, for this year's budget, we do have a bank. We haven't used the bank. Right. But and we're not going to use it. We're not going to use the bank. On either side. Right. Right. Does that but, go away after two years? Yes, yes, yes. It, start, it, it diminishes. It's like your airline miles. So it's sort of yeah, like right. phantom <laughs> money that just sits out there. It actually, there's an accounting of <laughs> it's, it's, it in the, in the yeah, budget it's, every year. It's the ability to tax. It's not real money. It's not money yeah, that's it's sitting not, there. Right. Where bank is kind of misleading. It's not, there's no money sitting there. It's, it's an right. authorization to. I understand. It just increases your up to. Okay. What you can spend up to. That's a good way to phrase it. Okay. okay. Let's call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. That's so excited, yeah. my light came. Mm. <laughs> <See that. laughs> okay, we're at discussion items, and Mr. Desiderio is giving us the discussion item commercial vehicles, residential parking. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Desiderio. Thank you. I didn't give you a chance to look at it before the meeting. Let me walk you through it, where the changes are. <clears throat> we inserted after paragraph C, or. So paragraph A is permitted, and it says what's not permitted, uh, excuse me, what is permitted, and then one commercial. I apologize. I turned this. I thought I did. Try again. Popular. Um, <laughs> to us, you are. So, but we're, your your fan we're club. Ones that are calling your fan club is here in person, yeah, so apparently. we wouldn't be calling you. So what we did was, so you so you, ha you can put one commercial vehicle in the garage, eighty five hundred pounds, and you can have one auto cab, which is C, or you can have one commercial vehicle, eighty five hundred pounds. So B and C are an or, and A is an and. In addition to which, then in D, we put in the language all, uh, for C and D, all defined vehicles must be parked within five feet of the premises garage, or if the premises does not have a garage, within five feet of the end of the premises driveway, so, which I believe is it. So I think that covered the, the issues that, uh, that were raised the last meeting. Is B one other and thing, C or D? B and. A, 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 you can have B and C, C or, or D. D. Right. That is correct. C or D and just, you also, in B, you took out that second sentence in addition to those yes. vehicles requiring commercial yes. parking. Bradley? It's going to sound silly, but um, as long as it's parked in a garage, it's constrained to one. I mean, it's doubtful you're going to have two vehicles that are more than 8,500 pounds, but why the limitation saying only one inside the garage? That's what the prior ordinance was, and nobody suggested changing it, but there's okay. no, no magic to it, quite frankly. Okay, okay, so that was the same. All right, yeah, because I don't say why. That, that's what it was in the, yeah. I think the idea is to not have it be a, a, a parking, you know, have be turn into a commercial facility. Okay. Almost got to fit the garage. Um, this is Larrier. E, where it says uh, within five feet of the end of the premises driveway, did we not want to specify which end of the premises driveway? Within, within, five, feet, within five feet of the Absolutely. premises garage. Within five feet of the end of the, so. The end. The street end. It could be the street end. But it could if be. You're, you're absolutely correct. So I would specify within five feet, if possible, of the inner end, far inside end. Wait, wait, wait. We need a word. Yeah. Rear property line or something? Yeah, that was. I know that was the intent. As far well, if you in say as, as five feet in, within the rear property as far line, in as you can go, I can get my car At least car within there. five feet of the end of as far as we you can it. go. <laughs> I'll think of something. But I, you're you're <laughs> okay. absolutely right. Yeah. Right. Any other questions on this? Yes. So we're yes. One, it's just a word, but a. Parking in connection with the transaction of business with the owner or occupant of the premises is permitted. Sounds like I'm from ABC Company and I'm going to trans I'm going to um, transact business with Mrs. Leventhal and I can do this. Rather than say instead of with, I would suggest by. 
parking in connection with the transaction <coughs> of business by the owner or occupant of the premises is permitted. I have no attachment to with. If you want to change it to by, I'm fine. That was that was actually not a change. That was no, I know that it was wasn't. what was there. But by okay, by the owner. By parking in connection with the transaction of business by the owner or occupant of the premises is permitted. Yes. Parking in connection with the transaction business. A business by the owner or occupant. <coughs> but isn't the, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I, I'm fine with it, but I thought the intent was that a third party, okay, so if I was a UPS guy and I was coming up, I could park. Parking in connection with the transaction of business with yeah. owner occupier of the premises. That's, that's my reason. That's what the intent was. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Oh, so we're not talking here re off-street parking. That that that. So if you're going to let, let's say you have a right, let's say you're 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 the UPS guy, you're the FedEx person, whoever it is, and you have <coughs> business with the person in that premises, you can park there. I think okay. that's what the intent okay. is. So I think with is correct. But what keeps the UPS guy from pulling into your driveway and just? hanging out there forever. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I can't understand what you're saying. What, what keeps the UPS man from pulling into the driveway and just parking there overnight? Because he can't, because he doesn't live there and all these other prohibitions are there. Okay. okay. In connection with the transaction. Okay, so we're going to add a word to E. We're going to add something to E, yes. Something says, to E, to define the, and, you, it, the, Right, in the rear, so. Okay. Yeah. Furthest from the... Okay. Okay, so we will uh, introduce this at the next meeting. Is everyone okay with this? That's fine. Yep. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Desiderio. And thanks and that's for uh, why it's good to have him on for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. We yep. would not yep. have had that. Yes. Yep. Much easier than email. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is switch the uh, number three to talk about the uh, litigation, if you would give a report on the litigation, Mr. Desiderio, yeah. with 60 ba Woodland. Yeah, basically, uh, based, upon, uh, based upon a resolution that the governing body passed at the last meeting, uh, we uh, contacted the judge um, uh, who was handling the matter and advised them that the township wished to uh, withdraw uh, its opposition to the appeal that had been taken from the uh, uh, Board of Adjustment um, uh, decision. Uh, the Board of Adjustment made the same uh, same request. Uh, the judge accepted that. Counsel for the uh, plaintiffs, who were the affected homeowners, uh, didn't have any objection. Uh, we signed a consent order. We submitted it to the judge, and we were told that the judge signed the consent order uh, today, and that it will be processed through the court. So that lawsuit is effectively over. So it's done, and the. And, and technically, the zoning on 60 Woodland would be what it was, okay, under the, uh, under the uh, Women's Club ownership. Great. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, it is the Township Committee's intention as the owner of the property, going back to item number two now, it's the Township's... Uh, Committee's intention as the owner of the of the six, of the former women's club at 60 Woodland to um, create additional public parking there, and um, our our engineer has looked at that site and uh, we believe that we can create additional public parking on the west side of the building, and also that we want to merge the two lots, the Highland lot and the 60 Woodland lot create a flow of cars between the two parking lots. And it is um, after talking with Mr. Desiderio and doing some legal research, we believe we are within our rights as the owner of the property to uh, make that improvement uh, for the public good. So uh, what we want to come out of this is a motion to move forward um, in creating that parking, um, and if Mr. Desiderio wants to wordsmith that a little bit, but that's essentially what we want to do, right? So we can get a motion to move forward. Um, I think we should just be clear about 
the, the matter of the review of the site plan? Yes. As part of that? The, uh, do you want to do that, Mr. Uh, sure. Um, after discussion with council, it seems reasonable to uh, conduct an informal site plan review uh, with the planning board uh, regarding the design for any parking improvements that we're going to uh, provide there. So we're going to... Uh, I, I would I would make the motion that uh, the mayor suggests with the uh, uh, added proviso that we're going to be doing that and that Mr. Desideri will be representing the township before the planning board at that time. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to move forward with um, the plan to create additional parking and have that site plan uh, presented as a courtesy to the planning board and that will require proper no or well actually we are as a courtesy doing notification to um, residents within 200 feet so with that please call the roll mr brownlee yes mrs larrier yes mr leventhal yes mr ryan yes mayor Dulk. yes thank you very much okay now we're on the consent agenda we get a motion so moved second any discussion on the consent agenda items? Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. We're now at our second public comment period. Is there anyone who would like to address the Township Committee? Please come up and give us your name and address. Well, I've never done this. Name before. and address. My name is Ruth Ross. I live at 169. Maplewood Avenue. I have a good view of what goes on in the village. I've lived in the village for 30 years, Essex County for 45. Um, while we're on the parking, um, I pay for parking in the lot on Highland Place, number five. Um, I also drive a Beetle. And while I realize that this is out of the purview of the committee and members, I think that there may be ways that a suggestion could be written up. And what I'm talking about is the proliferation of SUVs, the difficulties that they present in roads and care and parking and on and on and on, uh, including the fact that my last beetle was in Maplewood Village by a big SUV. Um, and I've seen so many violations of this in terms of parking and driving and convenience that I really, you know, find myself objecting, you know, to some of the issues uh, that uh, seem to arise. And again, I repeat, I'm not, I am aware of the fact that the committee and the township that you can't actually do this, <coughs> but there may be ways that you could support recommendations or suggestions or thoughts that could be published uh, for people, you know, to uh, see for their purview. Might cut down on the uh, number of SUVs. And obviously, listen, I, I'm quite aware there are times when people need a large vehicle for work, for family, for both, and I'm, you know, I'm not being, I don't think unrealistic. Um, so that was my, um, can I, can I mention two or three others? Sure. Okay. Um, Maplewood is a lot of garbage around. I had the impression that certain garbage cans, I'm not sure what the technical term might be, had been removed. But I walk around, obviously I see town, I can't go anywhere without getting out onto the, you know, to the main streets. Garbage is thrown everywhere. And there seems to be a, a fewer of the town garbage pails for people to use. Now, I know this is a tricky issue because, you know, people can be just thoughtless and that may be the issue. But I just raise it for um, some sort of uh, consideration. Um, I guess the other thing about the SUVs, and I'm a walker and a bike rider, and I do ride my bike in Maplewood. I do follow bike law about ride, how you signal your turns and everything and so forth and so on. And I just have been, I've had so many close calls 
um, in the last, I would say, year or so. It hasn't stopped me from writing, but I guess it's uh, set my aggravation level up a little higher. Just people who are just, you know, thoughtless and, <coughs> and yes, I guess I notice more when it's an SUV than when it's, you know, a regular vehicle. Uh, garbage cans, ah, revenue from the state. I will add, I have no great love of our current governor. There are there ways possible that that could be increased? Is there anything that you feel that citizens like myself could have any letter writing or any possible action that might increase the revenue uh, from the state? That's uh, obviously a kind of a rhetorical question. Um, budget policeman. Um, yeah, I think that's. I think that's all. And again, I let me just uh, respond to two things. The um, less garbage cans. We installed the. Um, the, the motorized garbage can, what do they call them, the belly busters? Yeah. Uh, with the garbage, big bellies. Big bellies. Big bellies. They're, they're compacts. They actually yeah, no, can I hold can. a lot more garbage. So we're in the process of installing a couple of more, and we are reducing the cans and putting more of those in. So that's a planned um, effort. There's also just a little more garbage around because a lot of the garbage was under the snow. And now the snow oh, is melted, okay, yeah. it's all starting to appear again. So once we get, you know, this snow all gone and we get the street sweepers back out there and things are, um, and then the Village Alliance has their people come through, uh, it will be, it will look a lot better. But this is, this is just uh, a period of time we're in transition. Seasonal, yeah, no, yeah. I can understand that. I, I mean, On the revenue from the state, I sincerely doubt that with our current governor that there's going to be any change in the tax system. Um, I agree on that, but but we will certainly, if there's an opportunity to engage citizens in the uh, effort to raise revenue from the state, we will certainly <coughs> reach out to you and everyone else. Um, but at this point, there's no proposal to raise any revenue, so until there is a real proposal that can be debated, um, not, not a lot of hope to do that. Right. Well, listen, since you tax, since homes, and I had been a, I didn't exactly own a home, I was in a condo, which I owned and I paid taxes on. It occurs to me, and I, maybe this is a facetious comment on my part, you, you might tax cars based on their size and weight. <laughs> All right, I'll... Yeah, we, we don't have that right. Have that right. <laughs> we don't have that right to do that. Yeah, no, I, I was... Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Okay, Mike. thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address the Township Committee? Okay. Seeing no one else, we will... Uh, your bag is... Is that your bag? No. Okay. Uh, we'll close the second public comment period. Uh, we have the Construction Code official report for January 2014, and we'll now go to administrative reports. Mr. Manning. Yes, uh, thank you. I have three items. Number one is that we have a new service under Notify Me on our website, and that is regarding information about just Jitney bus service, and it's real-time notices to people. So if anyone takes the Jitney, is interested in what's going on with the Jitney, please sign up under Notify Me. It's in the upper right-hand corner of www.maplewoodnj.org and uh, click on for the uh, Jitney bus so that if there is a, a, a breakdown or something, we will send out a notice right away so people can make other arrangements and plans. Second is that um, the animal controls, uh, the animal, the Jersey Animal Coalition, uh, their facility is closed for the time being due to some issues that they have to work out. So we have no real place to bring our animals. We have a proposal from the Associated Humane Society uh, to receive stray dogs and cats and incoming wildlife for a fee. <coughs> but also, they're willing to provide animal control services should our animal control officer 
um, either be out on vacation or have a long-term illness. Uh, we used to work with <coughs> South Orange to do that, but apparently their animal control officer retired and they haven't replaced them. So I'm suggesting you all have a copy of the letter that if you would authorize me to sign that letter so that we can have this in place during this uh, difficult period. Just, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just as a point of information, this is the same organization that comes here uh, roughly once a month, correct? Yes, and provides uh, low-cost spade and neutering. This is the March 17, 2014 uh, proposal to us in which they would um, uh, they charge us $100 for the cost of bringing a stray dog there and $90 for the cost of a cat and that the dogs would receive various inoculations um, and the cats would also receive inoculations there. So you're proposing that. Is there a motion for that? So moved. I'll second it. Any discussion? Sorry, Mr. Brownlee. Sorry. Who's called the roll? Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Ms. Larrier? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. And the next uh, and last item that I have is regarding an internship. Uh, a while back, about a year ago, uh, Mayor, when you were chairing the Department of Public Works mm -hmm. Committee, we met with the Maplewood Garden Club. And they were concerned because we had layoffs in 2009, we haven't really replaced staff, about the quality of some of our public lands. And they, one of the things that they have suggested was to uh, enter into an agreement with the Rutgers University for an intern uh, program where we would get people from the university would come here uh, and they would work for uh, doing special projects, things that you know somebody with unique talents could do. And I know that Mr. Niles, Nile, who is here, and Kathy Coleman and Eric Bergbank worked very, very hard on getting this all together. Uh, I sent you a copy of it yesterday, this internship uh, program, a draft proposal. And I think it's a very good idea, and I think that we should go forward with it. Uh, we're nailing down the, uh, you know, we're, we're nailing down the particulars of it, and we just need your blessing to say, yes, if you get this all together, we're, we're willing to do that. We would have them come in, I think, I think it was the end of April, uh, and go through well, April, I mean, May, June, about mid -May, two and a half. Mid-May yeah. mid to mid-August. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. Thank you. Anyone want to move the blessing? And then we can discuss and it. This would be for credit, not for pay. Correct? No, this is no, for, pay for pay at the moment, pay. but eventually it will be for credit. We hope. You know, yes, it's for pay right at the moment. $14 uh, an hour. Yes. 30 okay. hours per week. Yes. One person. And we want to move this and then we can discuss it? So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. Ms. Leventhal. Okay. Um, there was a suggestion that there might be two, so you're saying it's one it, in turn. Right, we can only afford one. Okay, and then um, the day there's a one a suggested one day where other intern nine additional up to that they would come free of charge. right, and they would come to do say a special project right. like replanting the water lilies over. It's wonderful across the street. I, I did have a concern when I read it, mm -hmm. and uh, being the chair of the co uh, the um, public, public works. works subcommittee, mm -hmm. I did call um, Mr. Burbank and thank him for his time. Um, I was concerned about the pesticides, um, and in our conversation, I learned that there may be the need, in terms of uh, not weed, to right. inject. And not weed, right? Yeah. Not spray, just the plant Injecting, itself. Yes. So um, he further said that this would not be done without the approval of the uh, Environmental Advisory Committee, and it would be on a one to one basis. So <coughs> that sits fine with me, mm -hmm. uh, being as I'm also uh, the liaison to the Environmental Advisory Committee. Uh, so I, I just wanted to, and I know that the town uses integrated pest management. Yes. And that this, you know, we're, we're dealing, mm -hmm. we're avoiding pesticides anyway. Absolutely. So um, I just want the public to, to know that, as that, that's a background, but that this would be very carefully managed. Yes. 
So you're public works and environment. Sounds like a conflict to me, but mm. that's oh, right. no. That's okay. No. Yeah, that's all right. It's anything but. Actually. So we have a uh, motion made and second. Is there any further discussion just on? One. Uh, yes. Just one. Um, I, I presume we're, we're capitalizing from what I read on an existing relationship. Um, and I realize it's very early, but longer term, um, is there any thought to perhaps expanding it beyond Rutgers? Uh, there hasn't been. Uh, I, mean, I realize this very early. I just don't yeah. want to preclude so that if it, downstream. I wouldn't see why not, but I'm not quite sure, um, you know, we're, as we work out the details to see what's really involved and who we might go to. Okay. Rutgers was very um, uh, I, you know, I, I open, yeah. so that's I realize why we're starting okay, yeah. fruit there. So. Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. And unless there are any questions? Yes, sir? The, um, the, the budget, you mentioned that the, uh, the hard copy, I know it's going to be in the news record on the, the 27th. Uh, you had mentioned that the hard copies would be available at Town Hall and the library, I'm assuming both branches. Do you have a guess? Is, first of all, is it going to be anywhere else besides those three locations? Online. I'm going to be on the physically, the hard copies. Um, uh, I'm going to ask the clerk that I, I, only because I've, we have put a few at the community center in the past. Uh, basically, the two libraries, town hall. The two libraries and town hall. And when will it actually? When will the hard copies actually be available? By the end of the week. Okay. Thank you. And if you have anyone has any suggestions about where we might place them, then. Um, Please let me know. Well, you had mentioned the community center. I mean, I don't know how many, but that yeah, no, sounds, no, that's like, a, a good, sounds that's like a good, a good place. place to put them as well. How many? Oh, I didn't have a number. I don't. Oh, how no. many do you? How many? Do you we'll know? leave that up to your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get take yeah, care yeah, of that. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Why don't you tell us uh, you have um, started advertising for a CFO? Yes. Uh, today we have our ad up in the New Jersey League of Municipalities magazine for a uh, chief finance officer and tax collector, certified tax collector. We also have it online on our website. <coughs> Just a question. I, I know that, that the position was held, you know, the same person held both positions. Yes. Uh, and that's what we're going for, for the replacement, or is it an option if we get Two different people that we we're might we're hoping to go with one as we have in the past uh, had this relationship for, for I think at least eight years yes not, maybe even more ten ten ten, ten. Yeah. Um, but if it doesn't you know it depends on who's out there and how they're you know who comes back with a with a resume etc so we will have to decide that time okay thank you thank you Sir so Desiderio. No report from Mr. Desiderio. What? Ms. Fritzen? No report. No report from Ms. Fritzen? Wow. Life sounds dull. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unless you have any questions. Any questions for either Mr. Desiderio or Ms. Fritzen? Okay, we're going to have reports from elected officials. Uh, Ms. Leventhal. I'm very happy to announce that Maplewood has received a $10,000 grant from uh, Sustainable Jersey. This is uh, funded through PSE&G um, with Sustainable Jersey. Um, it's a grant that uh, we will be administering. It is for the project called MAPSO Mill, which is three teams, Maplewood, MAP, SO is South Orange, and Mill is Milburn who um, have come together and been working for about a year and a half for diff on different projects and will um, further um, reach out to the rest of Essex County to create an Essex County um, network, green network. Um, and also within the grant are two um, projects that will be uh, led by Maplewood and, and conducted within the three uh, towns to uh, educate people on energy efficiencies and to um, green, further green, 
our lawns and gardens so that they're uh, cared for in as an organic manner as possible. Um, so I thank the green team for all their work on that and uh, um, Mr. Manning going forward in terms of administration. Uh, it's a one-year project and the uh, green team is very efficient and <coughs> I'm sure they'll work well with your office. Um, being as it's budget time, I was asked by uh, someone who happens to be a senior about the tax freeze. And I said that there were um, income limits, um, that I didn't have it off the top of my head. I, I think it's about 85000 or something, and uh, your taxes actually uh, get frozen at that point with the state so that um, you get a, a rebate. I, I'm wondering if we can search that information out. I'm not positive that 85 is correct. Uh, sounds high to me, but at any rate. And, and get it on our website as an announcement, and then let's like mm -hmm. leave it there. So that, because uh, people don't know about it. If um, anyone else can take advantage <coughs> of it, that would be great. And if it's 85, I'm sure quite a few people could. Um, I have. One more thing, and that's that uh, through Maplewood Loves Wellness, we've started working with the Easter Seals of New Jersey, and uh, specifically with our uh, recreation and health departments, where um, we are providing a 12-week uh, program for the disabled in terms of physically, uh, physical strength and coordination. Um, and. Uh, this is something that's already started, and if anyone uh, who's a resident of Maplewood is interested in knowing more about this, please reach out to our uh, recreation department at our main number. Thank you. Mr. Ryan. I have no report this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Brownlee. No report. Mrs. Larrier. No report. Everybody wants to go home. I have three <laughs> things. Uh, first is, um, and these should only take about a half hour each. Uh, <laughs> the first is um, this Thursday, we have a call with Senator Booker's uh, staff and the post office to uh, talk about the delivery of mail here, although it seems that we have resolved that you've been getting mail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you are the barometer. And Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Okay, well, Thanks, and uh, so uh, I have not received. Um, any com recent complaints, but we are going to have a conversation with um, them. We want to thank you, Mr. Carrera, for uh, organizing that. Uh, also, number two, we've started work on Brook Lane. Um, I know you, you have been getting all the updates. I think we're up to Brook Lane update number four, or Brook Path, rather, update number four. So number five is about to come out. Yeah, you've been getting them. Hi, you haven't? Okay. Well, I'll send all of them to you. You'll be, you'll be very happy to read them. Thank you. Um, so uh, this is uh, a project that we've agreed to, and we're moving forward with that, and, and that work is taking place. And lastly, our first festival of the year, of the many festivals that we will have this year, is the Ideas Festival, which will be at the library the first week in April. And, um, It'll be a week of uh, really exciting things over there, uh, readings and uh, famous authors who are coming through. And so check out the Maplewood Library website and get the schedule. And I just want to remind people again about Maplewood's Restaurant Week, which is the week of March 24th. As you heard Ms. Doran say, there's 25 uh, participating food establishments in town and you can get pretty good deals. I've already made my reservation at Verju uh, for next when Wednesday night. Uh, in case anyone wants to dine with my <laughs> wife and myself, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I intend to try to hit as many restaurants as possible during that week, and I hope you will too. So, with that, I think we uh, we can conclude. Our next meeting is Tuesday, April first, and that's no joke. Uh, to adjourn. And uh, if we can take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. We'll see you on April 1st. Amen.